In this video, I will give you 19 tips to boost your productivity with Cursor. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach you vibe coding and I'm launching a free community for AI entrepreneurs. I will share exclusive content, templates and resources for AI and vibe coding. To join the community, click on the link down below. All right, so my first tip is to use the command palette. So this is a quick way to access many functionalities within Cursor. To open the command palette, press command shift P. Just describe what you want to do, click or press enter and you are done. No need to waste time searching everywhere in the UI of cursor with the command palette. It's quick and easy. The command palette can also be used for opening files with command P, going to a specific line by using a colon and the line number or by going to a specific function or variable name by using the add sign. My next tip is to search your code base with AI. Sometime when you are coding, you get lost. You don't know in which file you should go. And if you don't know exactly what you are looking for, you cannot use the regular search bar. But with AI, you can just use natural language and describe what you are looking for. For that, you open the AI chat, you describe what you are looking for, you press enter, and Cursor will find it for you. My next tip is to import your settings from VS Code. This is useful if you were using VS Code before. So you go to Cursor Settings, General Menu, you click here, and you can import your VS Code settings as well as all your extensions. My next tip is to use global rules. These are general coding rules to guide the AI of Cursor. This will help you to have more consistent output from the AI. These rules apply to every project. For example, it can be your commenting style, the coding patterns. For example, you can tell Cursor to minimize the amount of code for a given functionality or to minimize the number of files affected. Side note, it's better to only give positive comments, not negative ones, because LLMs better understand positive comments. You go to the cursor settings, rules menu, and you put your rules here. And if you don't know where to get started with those rules, you can just copy paste these rules from a developer of cursor. And I will share this link in our free community. So you can start with these rules and then you can customize them. And you can also use this website where people share the cursor rules. My next tip is to use project rules. So this is the same idea as global rules that are useful to guide the AI, but contrary to global rules, they only apply to the current project. It can be a bit hard to differentiate. So my advice is to start with only project rules. And after a few projects, you can extract what you always include in a global rule. For the project rule, typically you will specify the tech stack and the coding style. To create new rules, go to cursor settings, role menu, and there is a button to create new rules. Rules are created as MDC files, which are in Markdown format. These rule files will be saved in this folder. There are four types of project rules. Always, which is always triggered. Manual, where you have to explicitly mention them in the chat. Auto attached, which are triggered only for certain files that match a certain pattern. And agent requested, which are triggered when the AI determines that it needs to use the rule based on the rule description. If you want to generate rules easily, you can use the AI chat of Cursor. Okay, couple of more advice about project rules. So keep them concise. Under 500 lines is a good target. Reuse rules. When your prompt becomes repetitive, this is a good sign that maybe you should create a rule. You can debug a rule by asking Cursor to tell you when it's using the rule. For example, always output, I'm using this rule. And you should see this output in your AI chat. And last note about project rule, they used to be a more simple dot cursor rules files, but it's been deprecated and will be removed. So don't use it. My next tip is to use PRD. PRD means product requirement document. This is a blueprint to describe a software project, including a very specific list of tasks. It's used by professional teams and you should use one for your project. So you start with a reasoning model like O3 on chat GPT to generate your PRD. Then you copy paste the PRD into your project and you add a project rule that asks Cursor to always refer to this document when implementing a feature and to update a task completed table so that you follow the progress. And after in your AI chat, you should refer to the tasks that are mentioned in your PRDs. My next tip is about the three different chat modes in Cursor. So first you have chat. This is when you have a coding question or when you want to understand the code base. 
then you have manual. This is when you want to make a very specific modification. So you need to specify which files are in the context and it doesn't have access to any tools. This is good if your code base is big or if you want to make a very targeted change and you know exactly what you want. Usually senior developers prefer this. And finally, there is agent mode. So agent mode has access to the entire code base and to all the tools, including the command line. This is good if you are just getting started or if you have a small code base. It's high risk, high reward. It does more, but it can make more mistakes. Usually beginners prefer this. I personally often start a new project with agent mode. Then I switch to manual once the project gets bigger and I rarely use chat mode. My next tip is to specify the context. So in cursor, we can manually add files to the context by mentioning them with the add sign or by clicking on the plus button. You can also reference the documentation of some libraries like Next.js or Ruby on Rails. Sometimes it can be a bit boring to add files manually to the context. So the best trick I find is to actually close all editor tabs, open the ones that will be part of the context. And then you can add all the open files by pressing forward slash and reference open editors. My next tip is to use the web context. So models don't have up to date data. Models are trained with a certain cutoff date. For example, the cutoff date of Claude Sonnet 3.7 is October 2024. So it doesn't have any information after that. However, software development changes fast. So you don't want to have outdated information, but you can fix this with the at web directive. This will tell Cursor that it also has to search the web. So why not include this in every request? Because it makes it slower. My next tip is to not one shot it. There is this fantasy among vibe coders that you can just one shot a project. You just have to craft the perfect prompt, you hit enter, and then you watch the magic happen on your screen, cursor in agent mode that magically does your whole app. In reality, it doesn't work people get frustrated and usually they try one of two things. Either they start from scratch and try to one shot it again with a different prompt, but it fails again, or they try to fix what has been done with other one shot prompts. But if you do this, you will be stuck in an endless loop. So a better approach is to go step by step. First, you have your PRD, you have your task list, you go one task at a time. And in your PRD, each task has a unique identifier in your AI chat. And once it's done, you make sure it's correct. My next tip is to review each change. It's very tempting to just accept every code change suggested by cursor, especially when it seems to work. But if you do this, it will quickly get out of control, especially when cursor changes some files that were not supposed to change. So sometimes cursor adds a new feature, but it breaks another one. So do not blindly accept the code suggestion of cursor. Look in detail at what it's doing and only accept what you understand and agree with. If you don't understand it, ask cursor to explain it. To you. If you think it shouldn't touch a file, you have to tell cursor. If you think it can be implemented in a more simple way, you have to tell cursor. My next tip is to implement the UI from an image. So let's say that you saw some design that you like. You don't need to waste your time to re-implement everything by hand. Cursor can do it. So in the AI chat, you can upload an image. Then you ask cursor to implement the UI based on this image. You can even tell cursor to use a specific library or frameworks. For example, implement this feature with with Tailwind CSS or with React. It's a huge time saver. The next tip is to use quick edit. So sometimes there is a quick change that you want to make. So instead of copy pasting the code manually into the chat, you can just directly select the code in your editor. You press command K and you will see this quick edit input explaining what you want to do, like bug fix, refactor, or create a test. You press enter, you review the change and you're done. My next tip is to change the model. Sometimes you don't get the result that you want. Cursor has access to several models. By default, Cursor tries to find the best one, but it's also possible to manually set the model. If one model doesn't work, you can try the same request with another one and sometimes it produces a better result. My next tip is to manage your credit usage. So Cursor has a credit system. Every month you have a quota of fast requests for the AI chat. Once you've used up all your quota, you can still use the AI chat, but it will be slower, which can be very frustrating. This quota only applies to pre 
premium models. So if you want to go faster and save money, you can switch to a non-premium model once you have exhausted your monthly quota. Or you can switch to usage-based pricing. This is in your account settings on the website of Curso. With usage-based pricing, you can get as many fast requests as you want, but you will pay extra for them. For a vibe color, productivity is very important, so this is totally worth it. If you've used up all your credits, another solution is to add your own custom model. So for that, you go in Curso settings and you have an option to add your model using your own API key. My next tip is to use a dot cursor ignore file. So the dot cursor ignore file tells cursor to ignore some files. This is useful for security, performance, and answer quality. For security, you don't want to let cursor access files with sensitive data, such as your dot m files with API keys. For performance, you don't want cursor to waste time indexing irrelevant files like images or binary files. And for answer quality, you don't want cursor to use irrelevant context because it will produce lower quality answers. So by default, Curso indexes all the files and the subfolders in the root folder of your project and use this as context for AI, but it excludes what is in your .gitignore if you have one. There is also a default exclusion list that should take care of most irrelevant files. If there are still some files that you need to specifically exclude, you can do it with a .cursor ignore. My next tip is for your debugging workflow. So let's say you are struggling with the bug, you are stuck, here is what you can do. First, you tell Cursor, please add log to the code to get better visibility into what is going on so that we can find a fix. I'll run the code and feed you the logs result. So Cursor will add the logging statement to the code at key points. Then you run the code, you collect the log output, then you go back to Cursor and say, here's the log output. What do you think is causing the issue and how to fix it? And then you paste the raw log output in the AI chat and hopefully Cursor will find out. My next tip is to use the auto run mode. It used to be called the YOLO mode. This is a hidden feature that gives much more power to agent mode. Without auto run mode, by default, when the agent runs a comment, it will ask you for a confirmation. In most cases, this is what you want. But with auto run mode, the agent has the right to use every tool without asking for confirmation. So to activate agent mode, you go to cursor options, features, and tick auto run mode. The best use case for auto run mode is to fix bugs. The agent will try to fix the bug, it will run the test, and it will keep iterating until the bug is fixed. This can also be used for build errors such as linting or if you feel adventurous it can also build a whole app including with running the test and doing database migration but only if you feel adventurous. My next tip is to use the AI terminal. So with the AI terminal Cursor helps you to run commands. To use it you go to the terminal, you press command K, you describe the task you want to do, you press enter and Cursor will find the correct syntax for you. No need to waste time researching some obscure syntax. This is especially useful for complex commands or the commands you rarely use. Okay, so I initially said that I will give you 19 tips, but here is another one, free bonus. Cursor can generate commit messages for you. So you go to the git menu, you stage the files of the commit, you click here to generate the commit message, you commit, and that's it. You can also bind the generate commit action to a keyboard shortcut. So for that, you go to a keyboard shortcuts menu with command shift P and you search for open keyboard shortcuts, and then you set up the shortcut that you want. And if you want to receive even more tips about vibe coding and AI, you should join me and hundreds of others in my free AI community. The link is down below. That's it for today. Bye.